Next, let's see whether how people test capital as a pricing model and how what is the result. Okay. We have very interesting result over here. Let's take a look at this graph. Okay, this graph here. Let's uh, highlight this one. Okay. Bigger. Okay. Bigger. Okay. This one. So here. Uh, we have blue uh, we have blue dots blue dots it is like this in the united states we collect all the stock all the stock all the firms uh, whose stock is listed and then we sort those companies by their size so from the biggest one from the biggest one like Exxon mobile to the smallest one, like something unknown. So we sort them by the size. And then we can make a 10% growth. Like top 10 largest firm and next top, next, 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 something like that. And then for each, they are called the decile portfolio. The size decile portfolio because decile means 10, right? So we sort all the funds by their size and make a 10 portfolio. So we have 10 decile portfolio those are decile portfolio and they are i think both government fund, like a risk free asset okay so this black line this black line is predicted capital as a pricing model right so here y is excess return mean excess return so it is basically expected return minus risk free rate risk minus free rate so this 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 part this part should be zero right zero zero and then this slope of this one, uh, slope is this one is a direct market premium. So in the capital asset pricing model, capital asset pricing model looks like this one, right? Capital model looks like this one. So here, this axis, right? So uh, this x axis is beta, y axis is excess reason. So what we want to see is the relationship. What we want to see is the relationship between these and this but in the in the in the analogy in the net y axis is basically this one minus rf so we are moving here we are moving this one over here right so basically we are uh okay. hmm, it, it doesn't uh, capture well so basically in the what we want to do is basically E R I minus R F. It is beta I expected value of market portfolio minus R F. Of course, you will ask question: Where does market portfolio come from? What happened to rules critic? Well, in this case, uh, people use some reasonable proxy for market portfolio, like combination of like COSP 200 index in Korea, for example, or COSP Company index in US, like NYSE index, something like that. So it is some index portfolio. So what you wanna do is, this is beta i, and this y axis e r i minus r f. And if capital as a pricing model is right, we have should have a straight line, right? And you know, this term, this term is same to all stop, all stop. And therefore, this is slope, basically this is slope. And because we have data about this part, we have data that this is slope. So this black line, you can draw this one. And our question is whether all stop are on the black line. If all stocks are in the black line, our capital asset pricing model is right. And, but if stocks are like something like this one, capital asset pricing model is wrong. And then this the data looks like this one. In the data, this black line, this black line is our prediction. This line, and this blue one is side decided portfolio, and this green line is the line that best fit best fit this blue dot blue dot if you look at this one well you may say well it is still the black line and blue line 
looks very similar to each other, right? It's similar to each other in some sense. So let's well, maybe you can argue that. Maybe you can argue that they're similar to each other. Well, they are slightly different, but what is the big deal? They're similar to each other. So you may say capital asset price model is right. And man, many people argue that capital make asset price model is a reasonable approximation, right? Blue line is in the data, line implies the data, and black line is a prediction of a capital asset price model. You know, how can prediction, it is, well, this looks nice to some people, but actually, this figure suggests the first failure of capital asset price model. Here, if you look at the blue line, some stocks are above, far above the blank line. And then, if some stocks are over the blank line, down the blank line, and there's no pattern, if there is no pattern, we can say capital asset price model. But if this blue line and blank line is systematically different, there is some pattern, we can suspect the capital asset price model is wrong. Indeed, there is pattern. Those lines, this is far away from blank line, they are usually small forms. Remember, we generate size decided portfolio, size sorted portfolio. So those were like a the smallest for smallest form portfolio made of smallest forms those ones. so this line says that the systematic pattern is that well small form tends to generate higher return than capital asset price model imply so if we go back this one if we have a small form if this is a beta of the small form small form tends to be over here right if we are big form big forms are like a, somewhere here or here. So there is a systematic difference that small form tends to generate higher return than the return implied in capitalist price model. Right? So this is first empirical failure. In fact, figure one, this is figure one, captures one of the first significant failure of the capitalist price model. The smallest forms the far right portfolio seemed on an average return of few percent too high given their betas. This is the celebrated or famous small form effect. Small form effect is firstly discovered by Barnes in 1981. And this devi deviation is statistically significant. In the second example, we use equally weighted portfolio as market proxy. And this change in specific can eliminate small form effect. But you know, you know, in market portfolio should be evaluated. Big form should have more weight and small form. That's natural. In the equally weighted portfolio, we give equal weight. Mm -hmm. Samsung Electronics or unknown Costa firm have exactly the same weight in the equally weighted portfolio, which does not make sense. So, but if we use that equally weighted portfolio as a market proxy, then capital asset pricing model seems right. But actually, it proves that capital asset pricing model is wrong because equally weighted portfolio cannot become a market portfolio because small form is too, we give too much weight into small form for equally weighted portfolio. If we give equal weighted portfolio to the 2000 stock in Korean market, Samsung Electronics is just one of them. But actually, Samsung Electronics is like 20% or 30% of the entire stock market. How we can treat the unknown Costa firm with the same weight with Samsung Electronics? That doesn't make sense. So figure 2 actually shows that although black line and blue line are statically indistinguishable, they are the same, this actually proves that there is something wrong with capital asset pricing model. So small form effect is the first empirical failure of the capital asset pricing model. But that is not the only one. How are the value and growth form? Well, you Kachiju Sangjangju. I think you heard about the value stock, growth stock a lot. Well in finance, there are many, many definitions about value and growth stock, but we have a special, we have a unique definition. So we have academic definition about value and growth fund. Value and growth fund is that, okay, when PM, PM is high, this is a value stock. 
what is P, what is M? I will explain. When P, M is low, it is called growth stock. Here, P is book value of the firm. Book value. Okay. M is market value of the firm. Okay. For example, let's think of the Google. What is the book value of the Google? Well, Google doesn't have a, nowadays. Google has a lot of servers and those things. How about uh, how about Facebook? Well, Facebook may have some asset, but most of the value of the Facebook is intangible. Right? Value of the Facebook. Facebook huge company. Facebook highly valuable company. Its market value is huge. However, in terms of book value, it doesn't have much. It has smart people, but it's not outside the accounting statement. It has some office, some desk, computer, that's all. But its market value is huge. So Facebook is a huge market value, but small book value. So Facebook is growth star. On the other hand, like, uh, on the other hand, like some, uh, Hyundai Motors, Hyundai Motors. Hyundai Motors is of course a valuable company, but we know what is the book value of Hyundai Motors. Like it has big factory, it has a lot of inventory, something like that. And another interesting example of the value firms are Korean banks. Korean banks, they have, a, this one is like greater than one. Korean banks, Korean banks greater than one. So, it, so market value of the Korean banks is smaller than its book value. So hypothetically, if we liquidate, if we liquidate Korean banks, we can have actually more money than the UK's market value. But anyway, so this is a way of defining uh, value form and growth. Form. The book to market ratio. So this BM is called the book to market ratio. The book to market ratio is ratio used to find the value of the company by comparing the book value firm to its market value. Book value is calculated by looking at the firm's historical cost or accounting value. Market value is determined as stock market, like a stock price multiplied by share number of shares. Simply speaking, value stocks are of higher book to market ratio growth stocks are of low BM ratio, book to market ratio. Then what is the why value and growth stock matter? Because value stock, growth stock, they praised evidence against capital asset price model. Let's take a look at another page. Well, look at the piggy figure three. That looks mess, right? This is the, uh, this is the, uh, 25 portfolio sorted on the basis of size and book to market ratio. So the logic is like this. So we can sort the forms. We can sort the forms from small to large. Like this is the like small form. This is large form. Right? And then likewise, we can say the PM is high. Book to market is high, book to market is low. So it means that we sort all the stock based on size and PM ratio. So for each stock, they have two indicators, whether they are small form or big form, whether they are value form, growth form, right? So for each form, we can characterize with two variables. Then we can make five groups. We can make five groups. Five group for each one. Okay. Five for each one. Okay. And then let's take a look at this part. Now, basically, through this sorting, we can create a 25, 25 portfolio based on the ranking of the PM uh, book to market ratio and ranking of the size. We have 25%. And then each portfolio has their own expected return and standard deviation. And we can 
or for each one, this is its own return. And then for each one, for each portfolio, we can test uh, capital asset pricing model. So here it is a beta, and this is mean excess return. So mean excess return. So again, what we do is the what we do is that this is the beta. This is E R I minus R F. And then we have a 25 portfolio and then we can map whether for each 25 portfolio they have their own beta and expected return. They have their own beta and expected return. So we have a 25 portfolio. And then we can position them, they look like this one. Well as you can see it is it is far from straight line. If capital asset pricing model is right, capital asset pricing model is right, there should be straight line and every 25 portfolio should be over here. Right? Every 25 portfolio will be over here, somewhere over here. However, in data, it is like a mess. It's all over the place. So it means that if we capital asset pricing model is again wrong. First evidence against capital, capital asset pricing model is the small form effect. Another is the value effect here. Okay. So higher average returns are consistent with the CAPM if this category of stocks have a high sensitivity to market or high beta. In capital asset pricing model, if some asset has high expected return, it should be because of beta, but in data it is not. However, small and especially value stocks seem to have abnormally high return, even after accounting for market beta. So small firm has a high return, that the capitalist price model implies, and the value stock has a higher return than the return implied in beta. Conversely, growth stock seem to do systematically worse than capital asset price model suggests. Okay. So value stock is a summary here. Okay. And growth stock is summary here. And the small stock is summary here. And the big stocks are somewhere here. So it means that capital is something wrong with capital is pricing model. Capital 3 showed this value size puzzle. It is just like figure 1, except that stocks are sorted in the portfolio based on size and book to market ratio rather than size alone. The highest portfolio here have three times the average excess return or the lowest portfolio. Let's compare this and this. It is expected return. They have the same beta, right? This one and this one. They have the same beta, but its expected return is just one third of this one, right? If capital asset pricing is model is right, because this one and this one and this one has the same beta, they should have the same similar expected return, but in reality they are not. So it means that there is something wrong with the capital asset pricing model. Now, here comes the famous pharma fringes refactor model, which we will discuss next.